Hi, I'm Rita. Welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Life Worth Reading. And welcome to a new reading vlog. Today is a Wednesday. It is the last day of January. And so I thought that I could start a new reading vlog like right at the start of the new month and to just show you what I'll be reading. It'll be just a, like a really casual weekly reading vlog. I feel like that's kind of the vibe that I'm going for at the moment, at least for these, this first week of February. Maybe in other weeks I'll have a more specific or themed vlog, but in this case, it'll be just a very relaxed, cozy reading vlog where I'll be showing you just what I'm reading, what I'm doing every day, and you know, that type of content that we like to see. I'm going to be showing you the hopeful TBR for this week since it, it is already a Wednesday. I'll probably stop filming Sunday, Monday, something like that. So I have a couple of days to get through the most that I can from these books. And the first one is the book that I'm currently in the middle of. Not really in the middle. I wish I was in the middle of it, but I'm right at the beginning, unfortunately. And that is Young Mungo by Stuart Douglas. I am 22% into this book. I'm reading it on my Kindle. And even though I'm really enjoying it, I feel like the chapters are really long. I don't know how to compare it to because I don't have the physical book with me, but it just takes me such a long time to get through each chapter. And so it feels like I'm not making very much progress in it. But this story is about our main character, Mungo, and he is in Scotland. I was trying to remember, Scotland. And unfortunately, his mother is an alcoholic, and so she's really not present at all. He is 15, I think, and he has two siblings. He has Jody, an older sister, and then he has Hamish, an even older brother, and he is just not very present as well. He's part of like this sort of like gang. He's just breaking up havoc in this town. And so Jody ends up taking care of him most of the time, and it's just like a really upsetting book. Um, in the synopsis, you say that this is also a book about friendship. He meets this boy named James, and I've just gotten to the part where they meet. And it is very sweet, but uh, it's just so upsetting. Like, I'm right at the beginning, and it's just so upsetting, and I feel like it'll get even worse. I knew going into it that this would be very sad. I know about, I haven't read it, but I know about Shaggy Bane, the other book that this author has published, which was a very, 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 very successful. And I know that that's also really, really sad. <laughs> and so I knew that this would be tough to get into, but it, it is very sad. I'm just kind of struggling through it. And because of that, because it is so upsetting, the other book that I have on this TBR is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Zidanto. I need a cozy light-hearted mystery to get me through Young Mungo for sure. This is a library book. I've actually just filmed my February TBR and so I put this book on there and I was like, you know what, just to balance the vibes out, I'm going to read this one. This will be a light read. This is 300 something pages. I feel like it'll fly by. So I'm hoping that I'll finish this book for sure. My two goals are to definitely finish these two books because I am 20 something percent into Young Mongo and I'm about to start this one as well. And if I do have the time, which I doubt that I will, but just to add something on here, I want to read Nightcrawling by Lil Motley. This is a book that I read the first chapter of in my Try Chapter vlog. I really, really enjoyed it and so I do want to continue on with it. And yeah, if I do finish this too, this is the one that I'll start up next. My plans for today. Well, not a lot is going on. I have one class on Wednesdays in the afternoon. It is now the morning and I will read a little bit now of Young Mungo before I have lunch. Then right after lunch, I have to go to university. I have an English class. And then after, I usually come home, but today I'm going to visit my grandma because I just love hanging out with her. And whenever I have the time, I like to go see her. So that's what I'll be doing today. So I will come home a little bit later than I usually do but hopefully tonight I have just a few things to do for university but hopefully I'll have some time to read I really love reading in my bed after dinner I love that so much so that's what I'll be doing every single day of the week <laughs> that's just what I do that's why I don't film a lot of what I do because I just think it's so boring for me to do the same thing every day 
But in any case, um, that's what I'll be doing. So I will be reading hopefully a chapter of this now before lunch and then yeah, I am have to go to university. Also, before I do go, I do want to sh show you my new calendar. I bought for myself a calendar for Christmas and I love it so much. It is bookish themed. I usually don't buy a lot of bookish theme things for my decoration, but I love the type of illustration on here. And since it is the last day of January, I do want to show you what the picture was for January. And so let me just pick up the camera and show you before we go. Okay, so this is the calendar. And January theme was Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And I read Jane Eyre at the end of last year, in like October or November, and I absolutely adored it. I loved it so much. And so this calendar was just everything to me. Like, I love them. Even though I really dislike Mr. Rochester, I just thought the illustration was so cute. And yeah, tomorrow when it's February, I'll show you the February picture. But I just love this calendar so much. And also, I do want to show you um, a couple of new things that I have on my wall. This is my... Okay, it's really dark. <laughs> but this is my desk, as you can see, my computer and all my stuff. But I did add a lot of postcards. It didn't used to look this full, but I just added a lot of postcards. And I just think it looks really cute. So every time that I'm editing or I'm working, I just look at it and I think it's... Really, really adorable. Hello friends, I am now in my bed. It is Wednesday night and I've just read a little bit more of Young Mango. I am currently 35% into it and I'm still really enjoying it. But yeah, it's going really slowly. I don't know if it's because of the length of the chapters, but it's going by really slowly. And yeah, I'm just having a really great time with it. A sad time with it. I love our main character, Mango. I love him so much. I love his sister, Jody. And yeah, they have like this really alcoholic mother that does not care about them and does not care for them. But Mungo always forgives her and he tries so hard to love her and be kind to her. But like she's so awful. And it's just, there are so many sad things happening. But yeah, Mungo and James are also becoming better friends. They are hanging out more. And I think it's so great because Mungo really needs a friend. And I don't know if it's going to develop into anything. I'm really not sure if that's a part of this book. But I'm just enjoying watching their friendship flourish a little bit. And I'm just so scared of what is going to happen like towards the end of the book. I'm just terrified of what they're going to do to Mungo. Like, how sad is it going to get? Honey? You've got a big storm coming. Because right now it's just like an overall sadness, like sad circumstances. But nothing really specific has happened. So I'm just wondering, how tragic is this going to be? You know? Tomorrow I'm going to bring this to university. I'm going to be at university all day and then I have a dentist appointment. So there's going to be a lot of waiting tomorrow. So I'm going to bring my Kindle and I'm also going to bring Rhea Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers because I really need to read that to lighten up. And hopefully I'll make some progress. Since I'll be at university all day, I probably won't do a speaking update because I just cannot film in public. But I will film some big role. I'll probably go to my library at university and read for a little bit. And so hopefully I'll get a lot of reading done tomorrow. But yeah, I'm really tired today. I'm waking up really early tomorrow, so it's time for bed. I'm done. I wanted to read until the 40% mark, but yeah, I'm just too tired at the moment. I, The words are not making sense anymore. And yeah, it's time for bed. So that's what I'll be doing. 
I'll see you all tomorrow. And I hope that you are having a good day when you are watching this. Hi, good morning. Today it is Thursday and I'm actually home a little bit earlier. I've had a really rough morning mentally. I don't really want to get into it, but yeah, it wasn't the best day for me. And so I went to my classes in the morning and then I had like a three hour break because one of my professors didn't come to class. And also today at my university, we didn't have water for some reason, like something happened. And so all the bathrooms were closed and there was no water to drink on the fountains. And so I thought to myself, I have a three hour break and I can't even go to the bathroom here. Like if I stay at my library, which was the plan, like I couldn't even go to the bathroom. And as well as I had already had a really rough morning. So I only had one other class today, but I decided to come home, which was maybe like a cowardly thing to do instead of like facing my problems. But honestly, just not today. You know, one of those days were just like, not today. I'm not cut out for this today. So that's exactly what happened to me. So I'm back home now and I had lunch. I did a little bit of chores around the house and I'm going to read now because in a few hours I have my dentist appointment and so I wanted to enjoy my afternoon to read a little bit. I'm going on my balcony because today it is really great weather. It is a beautiful day. So I'm going to enjoy it. You know, I have to get better and I'm going to enjoy it. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my balcony. We're going to read a couple of chapters of Young Mungo, but I also wanted to start Vera Wong. So I might do that. I might read a little bit more of Shaggy Bane, maybe, Shaggy Bane, oh my God, no. Young Mungo, maybe until like 40%-ish and then start Vera Wong. So let's go do that. Hi friends, okay, so I went to the dentist, I had my little appointment, then I came home, I had dinner, and basically what I want to tell you about Veer Wong is that I started it, and I'm currently, this is kind of ridiculous, I'm currently 136 pages into it. This is so easy to read, it is so enjoyable, I'll tell you more thoughts tomorrow because I'm really really tired today and I want to go to bed. And I feel like I'm not going to be the most coherent I can be. But this is just so fun. It is about Vera Wong. She has a little tea shop. She lives alone. Her husband has already passed away. Her child is old. So she doesn't really um, talk to her a lot anymore. And one day she does wake up and she finds this man that is dead in her tea shop. And she takes it upon herself to find out what happened to him. Solve his murder. Because the police don't, don't seem to think that there's foul play involved is this focusing i think so they don't believe that it was a murder but vera she really does and so she starts grouping these suspects together but she does it in a way that is so pleasing to read and it's so funny and so delightful like she's so cute i love her and so this is just really really easy to read we have it's always third person but we do have different chapters focusing on each character and so it just passes by really fast as you can tell <laughs> so i'm having a lot of fun with it i did want to read and one more chapter before bed because these chapters are really really short so i'm going to do that but i'm just having a great time with it and it's definitely what i needed in between young mungo i'm still 40 percent into it i haven't read any more today and i'm not going to at night it's too dense for right now i'm too tired but i am going to read one more chapter of this and then tomorrow i'll let you know more about my thoughts on both of the books but yeah i'm really excited about this one it was exactly what i was needing and i'm having a great time so yeah i'm going to read it for a little bit and i'll see you tomorrow
Hi friends, today's Friday and this morning I just did a lot of chores around the house. Oh my god, what's going on in my hair? Anyway, I just did a lot of chores around my house, but I did manage to read a little bit more of Young Mango. I am 50% into it and it's getting sadder by the chapter. We have basically like a dual timeline. We have May and I think we have the January before or something like that, but we have a dual timeline in which we are in the present where young Mungo is traveling with these two guys which in a really shady way like his mom arranged it it's very strange it's very bad and he's like he went camping with him to learn how to fish but he's really far away and you can probably guess what happens it's it's really really bad and then we have the a past timeline is just showing us more about his life in glasgow his family the problems that he has with his alcoholic mother him meeting james um and so we have the dual timeline and yeah it's just getting oh god it's so bad it's bad in like a sad way like it's so upsetting i am so upset and i can't believe i have 50 percent more to go like i want to dnf it just because of how upsetting it is but i'm not going to do that because i am enjoying it but it's just so it is very bad but the writing is really great and yeah today's a really beautiful day i'm going out now i think i may visit a new bookshop it's like the secondhand bookshop and they have books for very cheap but it's also for like helping institutions so you're kind of also helping out in certain ways it sounds like a good time i think i'm going to go with my mom now and maybe we'll do something else but i think i'm just going to stay home tonight i really haven't been in the mood to like go out or do anything i've been really introverted lately i haven't really been feeling like hanging out and i also don't have a lot of people to hang out with so that's the number two thing but yeah i'm hoping to read more of your wong i haven't read it today i'm 150 pages in i'm really really enjoying it it's super fun it's a great break from young mongo because that book is killing me and yeah that's all my updates for now i also changed my calendar because i where is it no here there it is because i forgot to do that yesterday and today is the second of february so i had to do that and for february it's the catcher in the rye which i haven't read and honestly i'm not that interested in but still so yeah i'll see you later and hopefully i don't know like i don't want to buy books but you know it's hard okay so i'm vlogging on my phone this is really strange for me but going to the bookshop was a big old flop because it's not open today. Apparently, because it's like a volunteer thing and it's um, a non-profit, they only open on Saturdays, which is tomorrow. So I'm going back there tomorrow. Hopefully, it'll be open and we can see what is going on in there because, yeah, like this was a, this is a big old flop. So I didn't get to do what I wanted to do, but that's fine. We'll go there tomorrow. And I don't have any other plans for today. I'm just going grocery shopping with my mom. And that's kind of it. I'm going to buy some popcorn. Maybe I'll watch a movie tonight. Maybe I'll read some more. Who knows? It's all up for debate. But I'll see you later. me and i'm back in bed are you surprised i'm not i want to update the books that i'm currently reading i am 60 percent into young mongo and guys like the updates are always the same like i'm just so deeply sad and upset about everything that's going on like both of the timelines are so sad i love these characters i mean I love Mungo, I love Jody, his sister, I love his neighbor as well, but the other characters, jail time for them. 
like I really connect with Mungo and I feel so bad for him and just everything that's going on is so upsetting but yeah I'm currently 60% in something just happened in this current camping timeline where I'm just like I don't know how we're going to recover from this I really don't know where this book is going because and it just feels so unfortunately it does feel so realistic you can't even be like oh good for him because it just feels so realistic and you just know that this probably won't end well for anyone and yeah it just feels so like this could be someone's really sad reality and it just makes me so upset like people are just going through hard things every day and i know that i'm being really vague it's just because i don't want to spoil any of the themes going into it but i would definitely check out trigger warnings because it is really really rough to read so i read like 20 percent today of the book and I had to stop. I had to get back to Vera Wong's and I am currently on page 205 so I have like 130 pages to go only so I'll definitely finish it tomorrow. This is just really fun so far. I love your Vera's character and I love this group of people that she calls her suspects and they're all kind of becoming friends which is really weird but at the same time you still don't know who did it. It's Did one of them murder the guy? did one of them do it and it's just yeah like i'm really enjoying it sometimes the um, writing is a little bit like a little bit cheesy and the characters in her monologues are like okay just like a little bit cheesy and stuff but it is really fun it is a good distraction and i'm just having a good time i can't read anymore because i am so tired and i do want to sleep well tonight because i don't know there's just a couple of things that i want to do tomorrow to really enjoy my day and because of that i am going to bed so those are my updates for tonight i read like i want to say that i've read like at least 100 pages today combined of both books which is really nice i find that the days where i don't have university i read less because i'm just so busy with all the other things that i can't do throughout the week and like chores and other relaxing things at home and so i find that i read less than i do on like a normal weekday but whatever it doesn't really matter i still read quite a little bit today i'm hoping to finish this one tomorrow i'm hoping to finish young Mo mango this weekend if i read like 20 percent a day i'll finish it on sunday so that's what i'm aiming to do but yeah, hopefully both of these books will be finished before this vlog will be up, which is really exciting. I also want to do my reading journal tomorrow because we are in the new month and I haven't done it yet. And I like to log on my TBR, I like to put my little trackers, so I need to do that tomorrow as well. So maybe I'll include it in the vlog. That sounds like fun. Okay, I'm rambling. I want to go to bed. So I will see you tomorrow. Sleep tight, have a nice night, and I will see you tomorrow with more updates. Friends, good morning. Today's Saturday, and I've just tried to make waffles for the first time, which is really exciting. And I'm going to show you. I haven't opened it yet, so if they look awful, yeah, I'm sorry about that, but let's. I'm just so excited about this, like, I can't believe it. Ignore the mixed batter, but well, they don't look amazing, but it's my first time, okay? They look a little bit deflated. I'm just going to leave them on for a little bit more, but listen, I'm excited, okay? This is a good result for me. I've been trying out a lot of new things in the kitchen which is really great because i've just spent a whole period of like me not enjoying cooking and me not making new recipes and always eating the same thing and i'm really actually really inspired to cook more find new recipes try new things so that's really exciting for me so yeah for my weekend i made my own waffle breakfast and i'm really happy about that hi i'm currently about to go to the bookstore that I was supposed to go yesterday and I'm also going to the library when I come back to drop off a graphic novel so I'll talk to you a little bit about that then 
But yeah, I'm really excited to check out this bookstore. Hopefully I won't leave with too many books because I haven't bought a single book this year. So let's see what happens. You know, let's find out what happens. Hopefully we'll get some cute footage and we'll just enjoy whether I buy a book or not. We'll just enjoy the ride. Okay, I'm back from the bookstore. I bought one book. I'll show you that in a little bit, but I couldn't not film in there. It was so tiny. It was so tiny in there and there were so many people. So like I physically did not have the space to film anything, but the sun is still shining. So I thought I could go to the garden for a little bit and read, and then I'm off to the library to give back a book. So let's go read just a couple of chapters and then library. I am so cold it is atrocious but in case i just read a little bit of your long i'm on page 230 so i think i read like 20 pages or something it ain't much but it's honest work i'm really enjoying it so far i wish it was a little bit shorter but in any case the book that i'm giving back is ballad for sophie this is a graphic novel about this pianist during the second world war in france and it's about several several decades later when he's quite old a journalist visits him to ask him some questions and to make like a tell-all interview which is a very common plot i would say or trope and the illustrations are absolutely amazing i loved it i am just really really happy that i read it but uh, yeah i need to give it back and i also need to pick up a book i forgot to mention this but i'm taking a german literature class this semester a post-war literature class and so I have to pick up a book by um, a German author which is called The Tin Drum by Gunter Grass so that's what I have to pick up it's also gigantic which is upsetting but I need to give this one back and pick up that one and then when we get home I'll show you hopefully that's the only book that I'll get but mm, we'll see so I'm off to go there now and yeah When I tell you that today is just simply not my day, it's Sunday now and I'm not feeling great. I don't know what it is. I started feeling kind of rough last night. It's not like I'm sick exactly, but I don't feel 100% if that makes any sense. Like I don't feel great, you know? Also my mental health has been a little bit shot in the last couple of days and yeah physically i'm not feeling great as well so that's a bummer and that's why i didn't film an update yesterday also it was a master chef day so that's what i did but i do want to tell you i do want to tell you that i did finish vera wong's unsolicited advice for murderers by jesse sutanto last night um before i went to bed i had only a couple of pages left so i decided to finish it and I really liked it. I gave it a 3.5. I rounded it up to a 4 on Goodreads. And I feel like what I liked the most about this book were definitely 
just the vibes it was really cozy um vera was really kind and i really enjoyed the food descriptions which is a little bit wild to say i just think that the murder mystery was definitely cozy i definitely understand the cozy mystery vibe now i did enjoy finley donovan as well and dial in for aunties but i think i like this one more than dial a for aunties because it felt a little bit more grounded there weren't just wacky stuff and plot twists for the sake of it it felt like a little bit more it felt like it was a little bit more well built the plot and yeah it was definitely a little bit more grounded which i definitely appreciated and what else i will say that my critiques for this book is i think it's a little bit too long i wish it was more of a novella because 300 and something pages is just <laughs> it's just a little bit too much i think also it was a little bit cheesy sometimes and we had a lot of character dynamics which was great but i'm more of in the cozy mystery to learn more about the plot and the mystery itself Another critique that I would say is that it felt a little bit predictable. I I figured some of it out, not all of it, but it didn't take away my enjoyment. It's just that when you have a small cast of characters, it's bound to be a little bit more predictable. But I prefer it to be this way than to just like bring in, uh, I don't know, like a completely different character like an unbelievable plot twist like i'd rather it be more grounded and a little bit more predictable than to just like hit you with something out of the blue and you're just like where, where did this come from so i definitely appreciated that and i i will say that these are some critiques i wish it was a little bit shorter i wish it was a little bit less cheesy and a little bit less predictable but i still really enjoyed reading it and i'm Reading it on the basis of my enjoyment, how much fun I had with it, how much I wanted to read it, and how fast I read it because I wanted to keep going. And so that's why I'm overall giving it a good rating because, yeah, there were some things that I wish were a little bit different, but it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the story. And so that's what I feel like is most important. And I'm happy that I got this done right at the beginning of February. That feels really nice. And I do want to show you because I never did show you what i got yesterday so at that bookshop i only saw one book that i wanted and it was this one em forster's a room with a view i've heard amazing things about this book and it is a classic from the beginning of the 20th century and i just really enjoyed the cover of it and again it's for a good cause you know like this is the only book that i bought this year but it was for a good cause, it's for helping an institution. They are all volunteers there, so it just felt good to help, you know? And I do want to read this one. It is more of a modern classic because it is from the beginning of the 20th century, but I'm excited to get to it eventually. And I don't really regret buying this. If I do regret it, I can just donate to a library or donate to one of these bookshops again that sell then that then sells the books for profit so yeah i'm excited about this one i don't really know what this is about but i know that it's set in italy and i've always wanted to visit italy so hopefully the descriptions will be really nice and vivid because i would definitely enjoy that and then from the library so i went to give back ballad for sophie and I had to pick up this giant behemoth of a book, which is Gunter Grass's The Tin Drum. This is the Portuguese translation because I don't have the English translation and it's fine. I don't mind reading it in Portuguese. But yeah, this is almost 700 pages. This is about a family before, during and after Second World War. And so I'm reading it for that post-war literature class that I'm taking. But this is scary this is really really scary and then i wasn't planning on picking anything up and what i did pick up is not exactly like a book to read in its entirety like so that's why i picked it up and it was aesop fables um and i just i love this cover and i've never seen it there but it is from a couple of years ago but i just never i've never seen it there 
So this volume features more than 300 timeless fables and more than one, 130 illustrations. And so it is just really great. And it has like this really, really tiny fables that Aesop did, um, I don't know, like thousands of years ago. So that's why I got it because it's not like a book to read like from front to back. It's like more of little fables that I'll read, for example, before bed or in between other books. So that's why I got it. I don't mind that I got it, okay? I know I'm not supposed to get books from the library anymore, but I just had to. Look at this. This is absolutely amazing. So I don't regret this, but we have two more books to add to the library, but we have also finished one. So that's something. In regard to Young Mungo, I am still 60% into it. I haven't read anything else. I'm going to read it a little bit today, hopefully like 20% I would like to. And then tomorrow I'm starting Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson for my buddy read with Mafalda. And that's it. I don't know what I'm going to do today. I've already taken the morning to do some university work unfortunately because this is the last week before i start my internship i start my internship on friday and after that i don't know how much time i'll have to do university stuff and i just didn't want to let it get to be too much before i could handle it so that's what what i did this morning and i don't know what i'm going to do this afternoon maybe i'll hang out with my boyfriend i'm still not sure but yeah i'm just, oh my God, I'm just not feeling great like if i could just lie in bed all day that that's what i would do that's what i would do because i'm just not feeling great but yeah one book down only one more to finish and we'll see where today takes us Hello, I am here to wrap up this vlog and to update you on all of my readings. I have now finished Young Mungo, which was really, really painful. I'm just going to say that. My official Goodreads review was just pain, but I ended up giving this book four stars. It's not, I reserve my fives to potentially like all time favorites or at least favorites of the year. And it's not really an all time favorite. I don't see myself coming back to this book. And it just didn't give me the five star feelings, but the writing was really incredible. I really loved Douglas Stewart's writing. I think that he has a real talent for simplicity, but also it's very, very poetic and it's very beautiful to read. And it never feels like too much, you know, which I really appreciate. So in terms of the writing, I really enjoyed it. We had the two timelines, like I mentioned, and then they kind of merged together, not really merged together, but we caught up to the point of it just being one timeline now. And what else can I say? I just really loved Mungo. I really felt for him the entire book. I created like a very, very emotional connection with him and it just hurt me the way that he was suffering. And I loved Jody as well. Towards the end, I was a little bit not a fan, but I really did like her throughout the book. Hamish was honestly heinous. Like I, I didn't like him. Their mom as well. Like I could, I appreciated how the author created this character that was so difficult to empathize with but at the same time at certain moments you couldn't help but also feel for her a little bit like just slightly but yeah it went in ways that i didn't expect in terms of plot and in terms of action i liked james as well the friend that mango made and i was just it was just really heartbreaking i really enjoyed it i guess I would recommend it for a very specific audience of contemporary fiction, literary fiction, people that enjoy character-driven stories and familiar stories and just stories about people. It's not very high action, it's just a story about this boy 
in Glasgow and his family and uh, his day to day and what I did say in one of my updates was that I just could feel how realistic this was in terms of I have never been to Scotland, I have never been to Glasgow and this is not really um, today's time I felt like we were maybe at least 80s or 90s I think maybe more towards 90s, I'm not sure so it's not like present day and I'm not trying to judge the city but you could just feel that Douglas Stewart grew up there and this was what he saw around him these are stories that he heard these are realities around him and for that I feel like it was even more heartbreaking because you just could feel like a sense of truth to it like I can't even really explain it better than that because I don't know if it's true or not but you could just feel like it you know like it was fiction that really felt like it was mimicking real life which just made it hurt a lot more so I ended up giving it four stars like a really strong four star it's just not a five because like I just reserved my fives for my favorites and this is not a favorite but I'm really excited to discuss this with the 20 something book club because it was their January pick that's why I read it I'm very happy that I did I probably wouldn't have gotten to it as quick as I did so I'm very thankful for the book club for that and what else? I also read Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers I ended up giving this a 3.5 rounded up to a 4 as well so another really great read that I had like I mentioned I really enjoyed this book I think that the pacing was really fun the characters all had really interesting motivations and the way that it just came together because of Vera I think that the strength of this book really is her character she's impossible to dislike she's just the Chinese grandma we've all wanted all our lives and the food descriptions as well oh my god I lived in China for a few years and it just made me miss the food so bad like every time that she was describing the foods that Vera was making I was just my mouth was watering I just miss Chinese food so much and I wish Vera would cook for me like that would be a dream come true but in any case my critiques for this like I mentioned it could be a little bit shorter it didn't need all these pages like if it was a shorter novella it would have been better and because it is a small cast of characters it's a little bit predictable but I have fun. I had lots of fun with this one and that's really all I can ask for. And it was a great distraction from Young Mongo, for sure. So I didn't get to start any other books, but you just wait for my next reading vlog and we'll get there. Okay, we'll get there. So in any, any case, thank you so much for watching this video. Oh, I forgot to mention, I also didn't do my reading journal. I haven't done it. We're a week into February and I still haven't done it. I really need to do it this weekend, but I just didn't have the time this week, so. That's what I also wanted to say. Now, in any case, if you enjoyed this reading vlog, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content and I'll see you in my next video. I hope you have a nice day and always remember that life is worth reading.